Our top story, people have taken to the streets across the world in a show of uh, solidarity with Palestinians suffering from Israeli aggression and occupation. People stage a rally in the U.S. city of San Francisco, California, expressing support for the people of Palestine and calling for an end to Israeli occupation. The rally was also held in the Lebanese capital Beirut to celebrate the victory of Palestinians in the face of recent aggression by the Israeli regime against the Gaza Strip. Elsewhere, thousands of pro-Palestinian demonstrators marched to the streets of London and other British cities. They called for the liberation of Palestine as well as sanctions against Israel. Across the channel, pro-Palestinian demonstrators hit the streets of the French capital, Paris. Now from New York is Mr. Jim Kavanaugh, founder of ThePolemicist.com. Hello, Jim. Hope you're safe and doing well out there in New York City. Um, your thoughts on where we're at right now and what's been going on for the last two weeks? Yes, uh, I'm not actually in New York right now, but, uh, you know, we've seen uh, something very important in the last couple of weeks, I think. And we've seen that... Uh, the tide has turned in terms of the Zionist narrative and the Israeli narrative among large sectors of the population, even in the United States. And I include especially young people in the United States, and that includes young Jewish adults in the United States. Uh, the Zionist narrative has lost its legitimacy, and, and it's lost its patina of moral virtue, and, and it's not going to get it back. Uh, now, that's a, there's still a big divide between uh, the mass of people who are seeing that and acting on it and going out in the streets and acting on it now, and the political parties, the, the leadership of the political parties and the media, who are still firmly Zionist and firmly going to spin everything in Israel's favor. But it is something different, and, and it really is, I think, uh, they know. <laughs> that that it, Israel already is delegitimized in, in a way that's going to be impossible to get back. That just makes a more dangerous situation in some respects, because they have to act more brutally in order to secure their position in, in, in the world. You know, they have the problem that they, that, that the, 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 as you said, as, the, as, the, as the, your correspondent said, Human Rights Watch is now saying Israel is committing the crime of apartheid. That's their language. The Israeli human rights organization, Betzalem, says there's a regime of Jewish supremacy from the, from the Mediterranean to the, to the Jordan River, and this is apartheid. And this is now undeniable when you see what's happening in Sheikh Jarrah as well as in Gaza, and what happened in Gaza many times before. Uh, so uh, that means, however, you know, the, 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 Israel, the, the Zionist problem is that there are too many Palestinians left. <laughs> You know, they, the Jewish settlers throughout the, are, are a minority of the population in the, in the areas that Israel controls, and the Israeli army says that. So they, you know, you, you, you're going to, they think they can forever do this kind of thing to the majority of the population, ethnic cleansing, br brutal uh, bombing, et cetera, to terrorize the majority of the population and keep them quiet. That is not going to work. It's going, they're going to keep being rebellions and uprisings, and it's going to create a, a, a much more difficult situation for the Israelis as they start to lose uh, political backing, and, at the base, at least, not at the, not at the leadership. You see what happens with Macron and Biden. They still support everything Israel does. And, Jim, you know, apartheid South Africa started seeing those same exact cracks. At one point, they seemed uh, formidable. It didn't seem that they were given to the ANC. They're actually hunting down ANC members. They had Nelson Mandela, you very well know, nearly 30 years incarcerated to the point where they got to the point after so many cracks and so much uh, loss, legit, uh, with, they had the, you know, the, they were somehow deemed legitimate in the eyes of the West. When those cracks showed up, ultimately you saw them reach out to Nelson Mandela when he was in jail. Okay, a guy that was on a U.S. terrorist watch list, and you very well know, they inked a letter, they started dialogue before you know it, there is no more apartheid before you know it. That same man who was branded a terrorist became the, uh, the righteous leader of uh, South Africa. Could we ever one day possibly see an end to apartheid Israel? It's possible. And, uh, you know, the, it's the existence and the resistance 
of the seven, eight million Palestinians that, that are still there, that haven't mm -hmm. been expelled far enough away, and enough of them haven't been exterminated, so that they're still in the way of finishing Israel. As I like to say, Israel doesn't exist yet. It's not a question of, is there a right to Will Israel ever exist? Because as the settlers say, their mission is to finish 48. It's not finished until they get a stable situation, and it's not stable. And as you say, Nelson Mandela was a terrorist for the United States and for Britain, you know, until he didn't change that designation until after he was the president. Uh, but one has to recognize there's a lot more resistance politically, there's, 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 there's economic and political power behind the Zionist camp in, in the West, in Europe, and the United States than there was behind the apartheid camp, the South African apartheid camp. And it's going to take a lot more to change that. So I, I'm not, I don't want to be triumphalist about this. This was not a great victory. <laughs> you know, what happened in Gaza, it's not a great victory. It's a, it's not a victory for the Israelis. And anything that's not a victory for the Israelis is a loss. But the Palestinians are still in a very weak position, militarily and politically. And there's going to have to be a situation develop they, they cannot win unless they make life hard for Israelis. And, uh, you know, Nelson Mandela didn't win uh, uh, over to overcome South Africa just by sitting in jail. There was a, his comrades were outside causing trouble for the white supremacist regime in, in, in South Africa. And that's I mean, what's going to happen. And it's very reminiscent happen. of the Palestinians. They tried the peaceful way. They tried all the protesting and the marches, the ANSI. You very well remember until nearly 70 of them got slaughtered by... A, the, uh, the the apartheid police, and then that's when they finally realized that look at the peaceful route. Okay, it's it's, it's basically moot at this point, and they took up armed resistance. Yes, there was Hamas is one of the few armed resistance uh, left. You know, the fact is, there was a there was a kind of a Mandela for the Palestinians. That was uh, Yasser Arafat who made the deal in Oslo, which has weakened the Palestinians ever since. Okay, so. You know, he was uh, uh, feted for that in the West. But there needs to be an armed resistance to win this battle. That has to be part of the battle. And, uh, you know, it's kind of too bad, that, from my point of view, that Hamas is the only one. But, you know, that's what the Israelis are trying to do. They're trying to get rid of every force in the region that could militarily in some way support the resistance, whether it's Iraq or Syria or Iran. And that's what they're worried about. And uh, so Hamas is kind of by default now the only one left. But uh, you're going to see people uprisings of the population in Israel and the West Bank and Gaza that we have seen it. And it's going to get worse. And I think it's going to be harder and harder for Israel to control and to make itself stable. Good stuff, bud. Stay safe. Always a pleasure to have you on, Jim. Thank you for joining us. Mr. Jim Cavanaugh there from New York, uh, founder of the Polemicist.com.